Hey there, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Devani. I hope you all are healthy and take care of your health and your safety in times of whatever COVID-19, SARS, COVID-19, whatever. So I'm really looking forward to my next talk with Rudolf Novak of Conkite, uh, maker of the cold card wallet. I haven't I haven't experimented or tested it yet, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that soon with maybe with another expert such as uh, Sven Schneiders. Uh, we're planning to do like a series of instructional tutorial videos, and you know I want to you know ask him about trade offs, security, privacy, ease of use, uh, um, UX, UI, you know. Um, especially for noobs, for Bitcoin beginners, because this is what the pod, bit, uh, uh, you know, the podcast show is all, also about. The main target people are, you know, beginners, noobs who don't have maybe, you know, don't have that much uh, technical skills, knowledge, experience, or don't have much time, patience, or they just want to, you know, have a convenient thing to do. But you know, we all need, we all in learning process, so it's important to, you know, stay up to date and educate yourself and be open-minded and uh, yeah, and really stay safe. I mean, it doesn't matter whatever hardware wall you're using, whether it be Trezor or Bitbox or whatever, um, but at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, security um, trade-offs. It's about minimizing the attack vectors and all that. So without further ado, this is my talk with Rodolfo Novak from Conkite. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, if you should like it, please give it a like, uh, retweet, share, whatever. Follow me on Twitter. Would really support me in any shape or form. Thank you so much for support and for listening. Here you go. Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. Um, Rodolfo Novak is my very special guest. Rodolfo, how are you doing? Everything okay? Good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, still, uh, still uninfected. <laughs> Uh, where are you, by the way? Can I ask you, I mean, where, approximately, where are you located? Like, yeah, I'm in, in Canada, Toronto. Okay, okay. Yeah, so what's the situation over there? Like, can you talk about it? Oh, it is, right? Like, oh, it, you know, the cases are growing exponentially, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, as usual, government start, it's, it's like slowing down testing. So I'm sure the numbers are going to start to slow down too, because, you know, if you don't test, it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, Rodolfo. So I think I saw you at one of these conferences, um, but we didn't talk. We just we just uh, probably uh, saw each other for uh, was that maybe in Berlin the Lightning Conference or was it in no, Riga? No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, Riga. Yes, I didn't go to the. Yeah. Lightning. So yeah. So so I saw you in Riga. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I listened to uh, one of your last interviews with Stephen Levera. I mean, I can, you know, refer most people when it's, especially when it comes, because uh, I'm not technical, so mm -hmm. I really want to talk more about the broader picture, you know, the, the, the bigger picture or the, the, you know, like break it down more really for mm -hmm. noobs. Um, you said um, in, in that interview that when you build your products, you uh, sort of, your reference point would be the most, experienced user like um now before um we go into this now i myself i mean i have i'm not technical i have experience you know with the trezor one wallet with the bitbox only mm -hmm. Bitcoin, uh, wallet uh with the multi-sig uh wallet of casa do you want like, you want to give like a, a brief overview in from your perspective, what is uh, what are the trade offs? Uh, what do you think are the trade offs that a newbie, uh, you know, uh, someone, and you know, I'm someone who, who really educates people and tries to, you know, mm -hmm. help them set up their whatever the wallet. And 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 I and I notice that people just don't have the time, the patience, and they really don't have the time. You know, people have family, the kids, and they don't have really that much time to go into like depth and and really understand, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's also depends on your on your on the degree of your skills, knowledge, paranoia, <laughs> and how cautious you are. Like, what what is your overall take? Like, when when it comes to the decision making of what kind of hard wallet, what what kind of trade off, simplicity, easiness, easy of use, um, and and why that reference point when it comes to the cold card wallet, um, the, the the most sort of experienced user. 
I guess I'll put it bluntly. If uh, uh, understanding some of the stuff, go to the exchange and sell all the coins you have. Mm-hmm. Do that right now, because what's the point? Right. Y- you know, if you want to be your own bank, if you want to have a self-sovereign money kind of deal, you're gonna have to do some research and you're gonna have to understand it, right? Uh, wait till the kids go to sleep, and read. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, that's, that's the, the, the reality of this stuff. Um, so um, what I can tell you is this. Uh, code card is very easy to use, right? It's, it's extremely easy to use. Uh, it may not look that way initially uh, because, again, like you said, our focus, our sort of uh, features for uh, people who care about this stuff, right? So, but that doesn't mean that it does not take just a few minutes to set it up, right? I mean, you set up the pin, set up the seed, write it down, and you're good to go, right? Um, Now, we don't make compromises, for example, in privacy. We let you figure out if you want to make, for example, those compromises. Um, You can run it with your own node. You can run it with Electrum. You can run it with Wasabi. You can run it with Blue Wallet. you can run it. Uh, I think you can watch it on uh, on Samurai. Anyways, like it, it is supported by many wallets, and I I think it's important for the makers not to uh, push a rhetoric to users that they don't need to understand because it's very easy. I mm-hmm. think it's important, and it's our sort of responsibility to to get people that want to have this kind of good money uh, to also have good procedures around their money. Um, because, you know, it's, uh, it's possible that some of these manufacturers won't be around tomorrow, right? And, and you need to know how to recover those seeds. You need to test your backups. Uh, that, that episode of Livera, I really go into depth uh, into a, a bunch of this stuff. Uh, I recommend people listen to that if they want to understand more. Um, but uh, but yes, I, I, again, like I think it's our responsibility as people who understand this stuff to to really get other people to understand this stuff too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you're right with the recovery procedure because um, uh, I asked, you know, um, the Casa team or actually directly James Lop. Uh, I said, you know, what happens if you know, probably, you know, I mean, probabilistically, um, what if Casa doesn't exist anymore? What if, you know, people cannot uh, use their uh, uh, server or, or the Casa software? And then, you know, he referred me to the uh, Casa ref- recovery guides. <laughs> and I looked at it, I'm like, okay, I mean, you know, and he, he compared it to baking a cake, like, you know, it's sort of easy, but, you know, it, of course he's talking from a technical uh experience perspective so i'm not sure whether you know an average user could maybe yeah you know you'd have to you'd have to learn it you'd have to uh, Mm -hmm. really elaborate like what are those steps and because it's not you know it's not a plug and play anymore it's it's really like going into the details and and finding your uh the recovery process and how you know so um when you when you say um like okay uh, the code card is easy to use. Like, what is it? Um, would you say what's the difference? But uh, let's say compared to a Trezor or Bitbox yeah, or any so, other. Yeah. Right. So okay. So so Trezor is um, is open source, right? But it has no physical security, zero security. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody that gets a hold of the device physically uh, could, for about a hundred dollars in a few minutes. Uh, take the seed out. Uh, so essentially, assume that a Trezor has to stay in a safe box, and if somebody gets hold of the safe box, seed's also gone, right? Uh, for for Ledger, uh, Ledger is closed source. Uh, it is physically secure. Um, I mean, no device is 100% unhackable, but it is fairly secure. Uh, but it is closed source. And I personally would never use a closed source device uh, for my Bitcoin needs because 
you know, the whole point of this experiment is not to trust. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, and then there is some other layers there of like, you, you can't really fully trust devices. So that's why you want to do them air gapped so that uh, if there is a flaw or something, nobody is getting access to them remotely. Um, so cold card does things differently than both of them. Uh, we wanted to, to essentially uh, solve both those problems in a single device, right? So cold card is fully open source, uh, but it also uses secure elements. So cold card has a, a, a very reasonable level of physical security, right? Uh, right now, probably costs half a million dollars for you to get in. Uh, and, uh, you know, the way we look at this is it's about increasing the cost of attack. Uh, attacks are always possible, right? And, and like I said, like nothing is unhackable. So um, with the current labs that are working on it, it, it costs a lot of money to, to try to get it. And I still have not had a positive, uh, a, a positive full extraction of a cold card Mark III, uh, even by people with, with you know, million dollar labs. Um, that doesn't mean it's not possible. It just means it hasn't been done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so would, that think, mean, would that mean that um, even theoretically, just theoretically, if the hardware were, you know, from the point of the production facility, you know, like compromised, would that be like a, a physical risk? Yeah. So, so we did things again, very, very differently than the other competitors. Uh, so um, with, with Ledger, your trust, sorry, with Trezor, you're trusting it to create your seed in an unsecure device. Right, that's that's uh, for me like unacceptable. Uh, and then on Ledger, you're trusting it with closed source. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is certified, it is audited certified, but that doesn't mean anything to me, right? Because I cannot verify it, so or the community cannot verify it. Um, so with Cold Card, uh, we ask you not to trust the device, uh, and uh. Uh, even though it's all open source and you can replace the chips, load your own firmware, do the whole shebang uh, to verify it yourself. Uh, we, we built a dice rolling feature into it. Mm -hmm. So you can put in your own entropy to generate the seed. So you don't trust us. Uh, you know, that's literally our motto. Please don't trust us. <laughs> uh, okay. Because, you know, unless you have an electron microscope, uh, you cannot verify the chips. That, that's true for any open chip, closed chip, or anything, really. Uh, and, and that's completely unrealistic, right, for people to be verifying the chips on their devices mm -hmm. physically. So, uh, so, so why don't we just trust, minim trust minimize it and, uh, and have you roll your own entropy in there? Uh, and, and then the next step is cold card can, can work very easy with a USB cable connected to Electrum kind of thing. Or... Uh, what is really designed for is you use it completely disconnected from anything. It's just connected to a battery via USB. And then you use the micro SD card to shuffle back and forth between unsigned transactions and signed transactions. Uh, okay. And it works very well with that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, when you get the transactions to sign, we go a step further than the competition does. Uh, we show every single uh, output of the transaction. Uh, we do some, we have some heuristics to check for some sanity on the, so that you're not being met in the middle for the transaction. Uh, th there's a lot of very, very uh, advanced uh, security built in. Um, we've also built in uh, another very cool security feature, which is we, we have essentially two pins, but we call them like the first pin, second pin. Uh, and uh, so let's say your device has been compromised or replaced by another device, right? Like a fake device on your desk um, that's trying to fish the pin from you so that they can attack the real device because they can't break it. Uh, they, we split the pin in half. And once you put half of the pin, if you get it right, um, it, sh it shows you two words. These two words were given to you when you set it up the first time. Uh, and then if the words are correct to you, it's kind of like a two-factor authentication. If the words are correct to you, then you type in the second part of the pin. If the words are incorrect, that means this device is not your device. Uh, so you've never given away your full pin. 
Uh, so that's a pretty neat one. Uh, another thing we do is our devices are clear cased, so you can actually inspect the device, make sure there is nothing added in there that looks suspicious, uh, like a radio sending uh, you know, your pin to another room or something. Um, and uh, you know, we have also duress pins. Uh, you can you have a brick me pin. So uh, say you are in a, in a duress situation or something that it makes sense to you to just brick the device. You can brick the device, and it's gone, done, forever. Uh, that means you're going to have to recover from a password. But maybe that's the situation you're in. Okay. Um, uh, can I just ask? Uh, yep. So uh, with a cold card uh, compared to let's say Trezor or Bitbox, um, I mean. It seems there are multiple parts to it. To you know, you need to know what if you lose like you have you had at least like two pins, right, with the cold card. So you have like multiple things that you have to keep safe, right? What if you lose one of those things? I mean, you know. I'm... Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. Say that again. So compared, like to Trezor, like. Like, you know, you, you set up, with Trezor, you set up your, you know, uh, bit whatever, 39 monomic phrase, you got your mm -hmm. pin, and that's it. But with the cold card, you have, like, you have multiple things that you have to keep safe, right? No, I mean, not necessarily, no. So it's it's the same. So a cold card, so do, do you know how you have a little, uh, a little paper sheet that has your 24 words? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a cold card, we give you, again, 28-word paper sheet. Sorry, 24 word sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only difference is uh, we make an extra two spots for you to write down the, the two secret words that are between you and the device. Mm -hmm. But you don't need, so let's say cold card is destroyed, right? Completely destroyed. Uh, and you can't get another one. You don't need any of that. You only you need is your 24 words. Your 24 words that work for Trezor, work for cold card, work for Ledger. We're all using the same standard. The, the extra security features are code card specific. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's all fairly, fairly straightforward. If you know how to use a Trezor, you can use a code card. It's probably easier. Great. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's the feedback that you get like from really like new, new, uh, you know, noobs or beginners? Uh, is there like any kind of testimonial or feedback you, you guys get? Like people, people already... love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so people normally like, you know, they get to it from like most of the, like the, the people who understand this stuff, like, you know, refer you to a cold card. Uh, and, and then uh, people find that like when they get it initially, it looks a little scary kind of thing. But then yeah. <laughs> as, as they watch one video online, they immediately know how to use it. And, and, you know, it just, it, it takes like five minutes to understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably because we don't send it in a pretty box. We send yeah. it in a secure bag. <laughs> a pretty transparent bag, right? <laughs> exactly. The, the bag is tamper evidence too. So, uh, so that you verify the serial number of the bag with the device too. Uh, mm -hmm. We go through extreme lengths. This is, uh, this is definitely a next generation of security for, for hardware wallets. And uh, the market seems to like it. Yeah. No, listen, I mean, we, we are, uh, me and my, uh, a good friend of mine, a Bitcoin friend who also read brilliant articles, Sven Schneiders. I'm not sure whether, whether you know him or not, but uh, he's pretty, he's much more technical than me, but he, uh, we, we agreed, you know, we should sit together because he also lives in Vienna, like me in Austria. And we would like do like a series of really short, uh, you know, testimonial videos or, or instructional videos, tutorial videos, and show all these different, like, whatever trade-offs and different products, whether it be Trezor or Cold Card or whatever Bitbox uh, by Shapeshift Security. So, and, and just, you know, give people like the chance to evaluate for themselves what's best for them. And, and but, you know, if, if Cold Card truly, because I'm, I'm you know, I admit it, I, I mean, never tried it. And probably I was until now a little bit afraid it's going to be a little bit too complicated. Um, I mean, I, I admit I'm a little bit, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe too convenient in, when, it, when it comes to those things. Um, but um, but it would be great, you know, to to show people that it's actually much much easier than it looks like, you know, as you see. So. Yeah, I think I think more videos, more education will will get us there, right? There there is a lot of good resources online, mm -hmm. uh, and it's getting better. Uh, like every week, somebody that does good videos 
teaching people how to do stuff makes a cold card one and, and it's like and it's even better than the previous one kind of thing yeah because uh, yeah that's hardly it, anything in german that's why i want to do it more in german language yeah you know? i i'm really looking forward to seeing it uh, i think it would be very helpful uh there, there is there is some in portuguese now there's some in spanish uh we, we've made our docs uh website also open source and people have been sort of making pull requests to add their videos to the website um so you know it's uh, it's growing I, i mean code card is uh maybe almost three years old i can't remember now i kind of lost track so uh you know we came into the space i mean we've been making hardware security for Bitcoin before Ledger and Treasury existed, uh, but it was for, for enterprise for us as well, right? For uh, mm -hmm. coinkite.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, when that service, uh, when we decided to, to, to move on from that service, um, we, we looked at the space and, and we just couldn't use what was available. Uh, we were not very happy with, with the two options that were in the market. Uh, that's really the motivation behind making code card to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so you know, this device did come much later than the others to the space. And it takes a while, right, for, for a lot of education and things to be out there. Uh, but, you know, it's happening. Uh, we're now, I think, like the third largest uh, seller of hardware wallets. Um, What's the latest know, version? What's the latest version? Mark, Mark 3. Okay. Cold, cold card Mark three. Uh, like what, what's gonna like, where do you see, where do you see this going? Like with the next version, whatever. And yeah. So, uh, so the way, you know, unlike again, unlike the competition, um, we, we don't believe in uh, status quo in terms of security. Like mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a new space. Things are evolving. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a point of contention to me that uh, devices are not being created, new devices. Uh, that are more secure. Uh, so we're going to keep on making new ones and, and exploring security and exploring, you know, how to make things, uh, things better. Um, again, you know, like a cold card Mark I, it's, it's like an order of magnitude more secure than a Trezor. Uh, and then Mark II, it's, <laughs> it's way like you know and then now mark three still have not been broken uh no seed extraction um and uh so so uh we we are working on uh you know uh, the next version but uh there's still some time from now uh mark three still it's it's very secure right so uh, mm -hmm. as it's evolving i mean how many times would, would people have to, to update the device i mean I mean, you know, honestly, forever, right? I, I mean, you know, this is this is a cat and mouse game with 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 security researchers and with attackers, right? I mean, when you think about it, you know, paying a hundred bucks for a device that holds your life savings, it's ridiculous, right? Right. Completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're gonna update every year or two to a new device, you know, that makes complete sense, right? You know, a year is a long time in security research. So, uh, and, you know, we're working with chip manufacturers to improve stuff. There's a lot going on, again, in a space that's only 10 years old. Um, so, uh, so, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a matter of, of keep on, keep on iterating, keep on improving things. Uh, our designs are open source, our schematics are open source. Uh, you know, people can build a code card themselves. Um, <laughs> Right. That's uh, that's kind of like our 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 mentality, right? Um, um, what I was going to ask you before that um, is that uh, well, you can use can, can you use the the, the cold card wallet as a standalone? Like, would you need like really an electron wallet additionally, like download like electron wallet, or is that like a can you use it as a huddle? You know, just as a right. huddle. I mean. It's a, it's a shame that uh, hardware wallets were called wallets because hardware wallets are not wallets. Electrum is a wallet. Bitcoin Core is a wallet, right? Um, you know, Blue Wallet is a wallet. Uh, the hardware devices are just signature devices. Right. They don't have any UTXO, so no blockchain information in them. They're completely disconnected. So they, they are unable to function 
by themselves, right? So Electrum or, or Core needs to build a transaction because it knows the blockchain data so that the hardware can sign it for it. We should have called them keychains. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a keychain actually. Yeah, it's, it gives you greater access to, yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the multi-sig of, of CASA? Is that like uh, from a trade-off perspective and security perspective, do, do you have any insights or knowledge about that? Yeah, so, uh, so we, we've worked with them right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to make that integration happen. Uh, I think Casa is a very interesting product. It's a pretty cool product. Um, you know, th there are privacy concerns with that, uh, with that product. Uh, but, you know, different people, different needs. Uh, so, you know, if what they're selling makes sense to you, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a good product. Um, you know, it, uh, it makes sense uh, for you. Um, you know, multi-sig is great. Uh, you can do multi-sig on code card and, you know, Electrum or whatever. Uh, you can also use our uh, open source bunker uh, to do uh, cosign, your own cosign service, but that's like a more advanced thing. Um, eventually, people like you are going to do bunker for your friends kind of thing, you know. Um, that's that's the kind of thing it's a, you're gonna have a person who's knowledgeable in a group of people and they would just help their friends um but yeah i mean so so yeah so casa does uh does offer something interesting and, and i think people should uh, should definitely look into it if if it makes sense for them especially if you're more noob type right and what about bitbox do you have like because well, you hardly spoke about bitbox is that is that like a is that similar to the trezor would you say or yeah, so so Bitbox, uh, the first one that they made was completely wrecked. Uh, they, there were a bunch of problems. Forgot to use the secure element on it. It's a it's a tricky problem, a tricky product. Uh, and then I think the second version came out. Um, you know, they they do have some architectural choices that are similar to ours, but uh, there's a lot of uh, things that are not quite uh, the way we would do. Um, I, you know, honestly, I just don't hear much about that product. So like, I, right. I don't, you know, uh, I, I haven't seen much, uh, much movement on that. And I think last time I checked their online store was not there anymore. So, um, okay. Is, I, I do you think, do you think is the physical extraction, uh, you know, possible that like in the, like in the case of, of Trezor, is that, the, or is there no, um, has been no like evaluation of, of the security? I, yeah, I, I just I just don't think there is enough eyes on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, unless you reach a certain critical mass of users, there's not going to be a lot of attention put on it. Uh, that's just, you know, a, the reality of, of how this thing go, right? Yeah. Um, they, they have, you know, they, they, they have some smart people there and uh, they, they have done some stuff. Uh, uh, but, uh, but again, it's, uh, it, it's just... It's just not a product I pay much attention to. Uh, right. Just critical mass issue. Uh, the thing that, is, you know, there's yeah, there's mm -hmm. like hundreds of hardware wallets out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, we are essentially like the only Bitcoin only, and that's what we we do. Uh, you know, we don't want to waste any resources on 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 alts. Um, I think, yeah, every single other hardware wallet out there supports many coins um you know some of them will make a gimmick right where they will have like a a firmware that's bitcoin only right for marketing kind of thing but you know you're still wasting a ton of resources on alts and still maintaining that exactly. source code still dealing with the bugs of all the alts so uh we, we're more uh, utilitarian that way <laughs> it's a very focused product but it is true. I mean, the more you learn about, you know, the security features, the trade-offs, one, there is no other way than become paranoid, actually, because I don't know, you know, I don't know how many people, you know, have, let's say, you know, a simple whatever, uh, uh, Trezor wallet or whatever, or, you know, the, the, it just, it, you become, I think, uh, it's good to become paranoid uh, in a way. Um, but on the other hand, I mean, it, it, it does, it does, uh, you know, create a little bit of, of fear and concern, you know, I mean, like, like, 
you know, I mean, the extreme case is like physical access to the to the hardware wallet. But um, other than that, it it is really disturbing, you know, to think about all these scenarios, like what could happen if, when, you know. Um, what do you think about that? Like, well, think? I think I think what's impossible, what's what's possible, realistic, and sort of practical is this. Um, Make sure you have your backups in order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure you have a hardware wallet that has minimum basic physical security, right? Mm -hmm. So if you forget it in your desk, your maid cannot just extract the pin from your hardware wallet, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, make sure you use hardware wallets air gapped, right? USB is not air gapping. Uh, you know, air gapping means no connection, right? right. Um, and uh, and make sure you run your own node. I think if you do those things, you are substantially, you have substantially increased the difficulty of somebody attacking you, right? And then once you have those down, then you can sort of start researching based on your life, where you live, right? And your own problems, like which other scenarios you should start investigating, right? Like, and how you can curtail those, right? Is it multi-sig your solution? Uh, is it a uh, 25th pass phrase? Uh, is it, um, you know, do you have multiple units? Where are they? Where is your encrypted backup? Can you encrypt backup, right? For example, you can't use a computer to encrypt your seed. That's silly, right? Because the computer is compromised. You just showed your seed to the computer. Yeah. So what we do on cold card is you can encrypt your seed in a micro SD card on the device that you really trust to the seed. Uh, for example, you shouldn't put a clear seed in a safe deposit box, right? Because a banker could or be ordered to open your safe deposit box, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or somebody could impersonate you and go to the bank and open your safe, safe security box. They're not that great, right? Uh, so they're great as a second location to keep things. So, but you don't want to keep anything there that somebody could see. So, you know, you put a encrypted seed there or partial encrypted seed, uh, or, you know, your multi-sig setup or whatever. But point is, you know, you have to think through this scenarios. It's, it's very important. Right. I'm a little curious, what, what was your path to, 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 you know, what are you doing right now? I mean, working on cold card and cold card. Well, you know, we've been in Bitcoin now for, you know, uh, Almost ten, yeah, ten years almost. Uh, like as a company, um, we've uh, I think uh, Cold Card was uh, CoinKite was registered in twenty twelve or late twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, almost ten years, and uh, you know we just we just been around for some time. Uh, you know, some of us uh, uh, have have backgrounds that uh, were pertinent uh, to to this industry. We have like a lot of experience in hardware lot of experience in hardware um, and uh, you know I grew up in Brazil there's physical considerations there for security mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know we, we do a lot of research and uh, we learn a lot from our users uh, I mean you know when you have almost 10 years of being in a market where people are trying to be robbed you, you know you, you, you learn a lot and you learn a lot from the ground um, and uh, that that's been very helpful. Mm -hmm. What is the like the uh, like? Is there um, a critical adoption rate in in Brazil? Like, how many people are? What's the situation with Bitcoin? Like, how do people perceive it? So or use it? you know, I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not. It's been it's been some time since I'm not as connected to Brazil anymore. But you know, I know many Bitcoiners there and. Uh, you, you know, uh, adoption there is, it's quite, quite reasonable for, for the economy size that it is. Um, do they use it as a store of value or really? Yeah. Like yeah. I exchange? mean, you, you know, if you grew up in a country that has monetary problems, you understand very fast store of value. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it's even politicians in Brazil now hold their, uh, hold their, uh, 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 uh their bribes in Bitcoin, you know, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and you know, it's seriously, there, there's been a few caught. Uh, it's fascinating, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, uh, again, right? Like different 
places, different people, different needs. Um, you know, Bitcoin is always going to be different things for different people. Um, you know, if you live in a, in a country where, uh, you know, your credit card gives you points and it costs almost nothing, you're going to use that to buy Starbucks coffee, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you live in a country where, you know, you can't buy stuff, well, then you might use Bitcoin to buy stuff. Um, you know, personally in Canada, you know, holding Bitcoin is better than holding Canadian dollar. Um, you know, it's uh, now we have a world that's a little bit in a, in a, in a conundrum <laughs> financially and, health and for health. So uh, having your monetary wealth in a way that you can transport is a big deal. You know, I have, uh, you know, I have some, uh, some Jewish family that, that left Europe uh, and, you know, like way back then. And, uh, you know, they, it was very hard for them to, to live with their stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, so, some people had to give away their, you know, not us, but, you know, there's stories of people who had to give away their, uh, their Picasso to, uh, to get a passport. Oh, yeah. right? so, uh, so, so being, being able to, to transport your wealth with you safely uh, is a big deal, very mm -hmm. big deal. And, and I think that uh, people in uh, Western first world countries are, are going to learn that more and more as the world starts to become a little trickier. Um, mm -hmm. With everything that's going on, uh, Rodolfo, like, um, do you see like it, sort of, you know, so many inflection points coming and so much, you know, uh, extraordinary circumstances? Um, you know, I mean, this whole virus thing is just, uh, you know, convenient thing also for the state to. Oh, for sure. Right. Um, don't don't let a good crisis go to waste, right? Like good exactly. tragedy is great for politicians. Now they can blame all their stupid monetary policies on this. Exactly. You know, don't get me wrong. This stuff is terrible, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all concerned. You know, it's a, it's a, it's. A, I mean, if you've seen my tweets, you, you know uh, I'm on board with uh, this thing being a problem. Mm -hmm. But you know, all this this, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, pieces of shit. Uh, are using this 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 tragedy as a great way of of uh, bailing out their friends and and bailing out everything and uh, and print more money and, and completely rack everything financially, right? Uh, I mean, reality is, um, you know, if you are somebody who's a bit more wealthy and you have equities, uh, you know, uh, you hold you know, stock, you have a house that you own and you have a car that you own. If you own things, right, you're going to probably do okay or better, right, uh, when, when they devalue your money, right? right. But, but if you're an average, like, citizen, you know, earning your paycheck, paycheck to paycheck and you pay rent kind of thing, your money is going to be worth a lot less. Mm -hmm. right? We already see that. It's not that housing prices is going up. It's just that your money is going down. <laughs> you know, in Canada, we can get like a 2% mortgage for 30, 30 years with 5% down. It's incredible. Right? I, I mean, it's insane. So it's essentially free money. And we're talking about like a million dollars, right? It's like, you know, if you have access to a million dollars in, in 30 years, a 2% interest per year, I, I mean... <laughs> Your money is worth nothing. It's just, it's not that you're getting that much free money. Right. And uh, now, uh, you know, a lot of politicians and, you know, and governments are not more and more, especially now, you know, talking about universal basic income. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it probably serves a, ser uh, serves a purpose to a certain degree, but um, what, you know, the next steps would be then, you know, uh, what, si what would happen in Cyprus, 2000, whatever, 13, 2014, the, curtailment, you know, of withdrawals. Uh, so people were not able to, so this is, this is going to come, this is going to come more uh, sooner or later. And then the negative interest rates are already active in Germany, um, retail and deposit. So do you see like a progression, like a fast and faster progression? And mm -hmm. because of that, people are now waking up to the fact like, Oh, you know, for Christ's sake, you know, I need to, you know, uh, save my wealth or, you know, put it somewhere. And I think, uh, Coin cold cart gonna be in high demand. I <laughs> think. Where do you where do you see this going? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we're just gonna ramp up production, right? I mean, it's, that's a it's a good problem to have. 
Mm-hmm. People need our stuff. Great. Now we just need to make it for everybody, right? right. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, and it's been showing, right? I mean, we've been growing like a lot uh, mm-hmm. every week. And uh, two weeks ago, we had our best week ever for sales. Wow. Uh, uh, and it was, it was like double, more than double. Incredible. Triple. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think people are waking up to, to the shortcomings of other products. And uh, they're also waking up to maybe needing multiple products uh, and, uh, and, and, and de-risking, really. That's, that's what we offer, right? It's a de-risk solution. Right. Uh, so, so as people come up with their, with their plans, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's going to make a lot of sense. Uh, the same goes for Open Dime, our other device, right? It's uh, it's selling more, and uh, people people like it, and they use it. Um, you know, especially can you, can now. You, can you describe yep. the Open Dime just just for my listeners? Like, what? Sure. What is that? Mm-hmm. So, Open Dime is like a, a cheap little USB device, right? Mm-hmm. That that's a Bitcoin bearer bond, right? It's a credit stick, right? Mm-hmm. So, essentially, you imagine a paper wallet that you could give it to somebody. Uh, but with with essentially trust minimized because mm-hmm. so a paper wallet if i if i want to let's say i want to buy your car right and we need to be quick right i don't want to wait for confirmations mm-hmm. i don't want to wait so uh I, I i go i look at the engine you know like i take a look at the car and i go and i give you a paper wallet the amount that we agreed on before so it's already confirmed that paper wallet the problem with that is I have a I could have a copy of that paper wallet. And as soon as you leave, I could redeem that paper wallet. Right. So now it's just a race condition, right? It's a race problem there to see who redeems the paper wallet first. So you can't trust it. Now with Open Dime, uh, you stick this USB stick in a computer and uh it initializes uh and uh you give it some entropy so you don't have to trust us creating the, the private key. You just essentially just dump any file. It's a random, uh, it's just a way to get entry. But anyway, so you initialize it, it gives you a Bitcoin address. You deposit Bitcoin in it and you take it out. Uh, what's cool is there is no backup. Oh, there is okay. nobody knows the private key, neither you nor the receiver. Whoever has possession of the device has the actual coins. So it's a really like a fungible, like cash. Exactly. It's physical money, Bitcoin. Right? It's wow. actual physical mm-hmm. Bitcoin. Unlike those, 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 those metal coins and that stuff, that stuff all has the private key available, right? Mm-hmm. This, is, this is an actual fungible uh, bearer asset. Uh, and then you can reuse this device to give it to somebody else to buy something. Or let's say you actually want to spend the Bitcoins that are inside it, right? Online or whatever. If you do, then you stick a pin to break something on the device. And then when you plug it in, it's going to reveal the private key. It unseals itself. Oh, got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so a lot of people use this device to 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 make purchases or to do things, especially when they don't want to wait. Uh, another nice feature is that you have privacy, right? Because there is no trace between you and I in terms of Bitcoin transaction. We're just carrying a UTXO. Like we're like, carrying a coin of Bitcoin in it. Very practical. Uh, yeah. How much is it? How exactly. much does it cost? How much does it cost? Like one of it's, those. Open it's apps? like uh, I can't remember. It's like a thirty-five or yeah. The, it's because it, the, the price sort of fluctuates, but it's, a, it's say it's around the thirty-five dollars for for three of them. Okay, but you have like no logistics for European Union countries. Like I mean, you, you would have. Oh yeah, to, we like, ship everywhere. Yeah, but uh, people. I mean, because when I when I when I got my cars, I had to pay like pretty much like uh, you know custom fees and stuff like that. So, is that yeah? Like well, a, you issue? know, there there is there's a lot of resellers in Europe mm-hmm. that that will probably resell to you. But you know what I say to people is like, you know, uh, a few percentage of tax on something that you're gonna use again for your financial freedom is is a small price to pay. Right. I, I know it sucks giving money to the state. I mean, you know. Like it's a good Bitcoin or we all hate tax. Um, but, uh, you know, you can also do a group buy, you know, get a few friends and, and order their way or get a friend who has a business to order so that you can get a tax return on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's many ways to go about it. But I, I think most importantly is just get it done. You know, a few extra bucks here and there. It's a small price to pay to, to, to keep your stuff done right. 
Well, that's really super practical. So, um, so Rodolfo, um, what, where, where do you see the next ten years go, uh, going with, uh, you know, with the with new de developments or ease of use or you know people more demanding uh, hardware wallets? Um, where do you see this development going? Um, I mean, we're we're gonna keep on keep on improving the product, you know, both security and UX. Uh, it is getting easier to use it. Uh, other auxiliary products and services are becoming also easier to use, right? Uh, for example, right now, uh, to use Electrum Code Card is as easy as export wallet from Code Card, and then you can just stick that micro SD on a computer and just open an Electrum, and it's it. Your wallet is there. Uh, so you know, Electrum is also probably improved the UI. Core is improving the UI. It's the same for you for Core, right? You can just export a file and you have Core, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's getting easier. So I think the whole ecosystem is finding more cohesion on how to do things. Uh, so you know, it's just that's it. It's just more security, more ease of use as the time progresses, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think and more integratable. Like for example, like yes. you know, Samurai. I, I'm a big fan of Samurai mobile mixing. Now, uh, is that like integratable with the hardware wallet? Is uh, I, I so Samurai. It, uh, I think they they are working on PSBT, which is the standard we use to sign uh, Bitcoin transactions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, as soon as that's out, then uh, then it's gonna work. I know you can already do stuff with uh, with uh, their uh, their watch only wallet, mm -hmm. uh, but. And I know they are working on PSBT, so that's coming. Um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of like the internet in the early days. You know, it just it, take, it takes time. It took thirty years to be able to order grocery online. <laughs> right? I mean, it really did. Yeah, it, but I think like, the trajectory is this time much faster. I mean, you can oh, just for see sure much much more exponential. I mean, the curve. You know. Exactly, I and mean, just look right. I mean, you know, we can send real money between each other on this call. Mm -hmm. With no banks, with nothing, right? Fairly easily and safely. Yeah, so, amazing. you know, it's just a matter of, of more products, more competition, more, more people using it, more feedback, and, you know, you get more improvement. It's, uh, it's as simple as that. It's, uh, it's just the, the, the future is bright. Yeah. As more and more people, I think, become educated and experienced, I think they will switch from their, you know, standard uh, let's say conventional, uh, whatever, uh, mainstream hardware wallets like Trezor or whatever to, to cold card, right? Because it just, it just airtight, right? What do you call it? Air gapped. It's, it's, it's more secure, right? Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's, a, um, I, I guess like more secure is not the, the way I like to describe this. The way I like to describe it, it's like less attack surface. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Because mm -hmm. think about it this way, right? Like, Everything has bugs, right? Let, let's not even say nefarious or problems or anything. Everything has bugs, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say some attacker found a bug. Um, if your device is not connected to something that he has access to, uh, he's going to have to come and break into your house or your office right. to get it, mm -hmm. to exploit that bug, right? Uh, now, if your device is connected via USB to your computer, and somehow this bug is accessible via USB, now he can be remote mm. and attack it, right? So not being connected to anything is a huge advantage. Mm. I mean, there, there's a reason why, like, a lot of uh, very critical infrastructure is completely offline, right? Nuclear power plants and all this stuff. It's, it's all offline because they understand that. that. Sometimes the only solution is to get scissors and cut the cord. <laughs> <laughs> Like in a literal way, uh, you know, uh, like look at the, the extent that they had to go to attack the Iranian uh, uh, enrichment plant, right? Like they couldn't just hack it. They had yeah. to create a specific virus for a specific plant, not even for information retrieval, where right? it was not to get stuff out because not that's not that easy. It was to try to attack it, uh, like disconnect it. Right, so but but it took a state actor or many state actors a substantial amount of resources to attack a specific place, right? Mm -hmm. 
Why? Because it's disconnected. Uh, so, so you know, that, that's sort of like the mentality here. It's like, we're going to try to do all the things that are like economically viable to, to remove a tax surface. Uh, that's sort of like our mindset. It's, it's about mm-hmm. increasing the cost of attack or time of attack. Uh, that's, that's how we, we function here. Great, great, uh, Rodolfo. So, yeah. So, anything else, um, Rodolfo? Like uh, uh, any other fo- forecast or prediction, or, uh, or or anything is coming up um, that you want to inform my listeners about? Or yeah, the, you? you know, markets are perfectly efficient, and the the halving is priced in. <laughs> what do you think about the stock to flow ratio? What's your opinion on the stock to flow ratio? <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I think so. I'm a big fan of, of uh, it's description over prescription, right? That's mm-hmm. the proxology of of the Austrian econom- economists. Um, um, the you cannot deny that the the price movement has followed the curve of stock to flow, right? Mm-hmm. That's undeniable. The chart is there. Uh, does that mean you follow it forever? We don't know, yeah. right? I mean, that's why all economic models are bullshit in terms of prediction, but they're extremely useful as, as means of, of understanding what, what has happened, right? It's a model, right? I mean, it's, a, it's a model, right? I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, models are not meant for religiosity, right? Like it's, uh, I think you, you, you can't ignore models that have had, good track record, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you cannot depend on them either, right? How you create your risk profiles are, are your own sort of way of thinking. But, uh, you know, this thing has been, uh, this been pretty spot on so far. Um, and, uh, you know, even before that came about as a, as a model, you, you know, we all sort of already knew like the, the things that happen when there is a happening, right? Like that's not, none of this is new the happening sort of price ups and, and also, you know, there's a lot of miners that have access to, to pretty good capital in very long term sort of means. So a lot of them might not even sell until the price is to the point that they need to be sold. So the price goes up, right? Less mm-hmm. supply. Um, uh, it, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it's just fun to watch. <laughs> Grab your popcorn. <laughs> and, uh, and let's see what happens, you know. And uh, I personally think you'll probably go up, you know, a few months after the halving, you know, yeah. a little bit uh, dependent on on some uh, some some liquidity in the markets and stuff. But uh, you know, Bitcoin could also go away tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah. But do you see like like a spontaneous like you know there's this spontaneous emergence in Austrian economics, like? huge liquidity flowing into Bitcoin because of all these circumstances, parameters, the conditions that we have right now, like that could just so, happen overnight, so like, not I overnight, just, but, you know, faster than expected. I, I tweeted about it last night uh, because somebody was saying that, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot less uh, new money because of the liquidity crunches, you know, due to the, the financial markets right now, right? So everybody's liquidating their, their stuff to be cash rich so that, so that they can buy stuff when things really hit bottom or also just de-risk some of their wealth. Um, w- w- and that's all true for equities, for bonds, for, you know, for metals, for, you know, like all that stuff. But that stuff is like, it's like orders and orders of magnitude bigger than Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, all Bitcoin needs is a sneeze. <laughs> you, you know, like Apple could buy the whole Bitcoin market, like today, yes. in one small little move, right? It's like it's like a little drop, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's so so. You can't use these models and, and these concepts that you see in in like ginormous markets, right? Mm-hmm. Ginormous markets. You can't use those models on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uncorrelated, mm-hmm. right? It, it completely uncorrelated. There is no, it's not inverse correlated. It's just uncorrelated, right? Um, and, and it's tiny. It's big for, you know, a bunch of crazy people like us into it, right? But it's, it's tiny. 
So, you, you know, you get just one player out there that has a bit of, of reserves that, that gets some interest on this for whatever reason. It could be other reasons than just sort of value. It could be whatever, right? Uh, like, boom, you have a rally. Yeah. It, it's, 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 that, it's that simple, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you could have uh, smaller state actors trying to, to get out of the petrodollar or trying to get out of whatever, right? And they need to, 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 to do commerce between them. You know, now you, it's enough money to make Bitcoin go a few orders of magnitude higher. Um, yeah. yeah, it's really ridiculous. So, I mean, what's the market cap right now? 150 billion or, or even less, uh, probably. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's tiny. It's just... Yeah, just, just, <laughs> it's, it's 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 hard to convey how small that is comparing mm -hmm. to to other markets, right? It's yeah. uh, um, and, and Bitcoin is actually useful, <laughs> right? And you know, I mean, the, the unique features again, you know, the the proper monetary properties of Bitcoin. I think this is some uh, more and more people are now waking up to the fact that it's absolutely scarce, absolutely limited supply, and with a difficulty adjustment, you know, every ten minutes, more or less, a block. So it's 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 immutable it's it's this is yep. i mean the properties are being more and more understood and that that makes me happy <laughs> yeah and you know just just think about it like you know the whole world going into negative interest rates i mean god knows us might go soon too they're zero now yeah um uh, you know people are not going to want to hold cash exactly yeah. and and you know and reality is you cannot hold apple stock as the only way to, to hold your wealth, right? I mean, it's completely insane because now you're dependent on consumer markets, right? Um, and, and, you know, like uh, holding gold, actual metal, it's, it's pretty hopeless too. I mean, I don't <laughs> think people longer, yeah. <laughs> I don't think people appreciate how hopeless it is gold. I mean, like, you know, it's heavy. Like yeah, really you transport it. You it's know? really fucking heavy. Yeah. Like you need forklifts to carry very little, right? And you and, need and, a safe. You need a really good safe for that. Physical you know? security. You need people with guns. Yeah. You cannot have gold without guns, mm. right? And and a lot of it. Uh, and then you have an issue. It's like you cannot authenticate gold without like really expensive equipment. There is a ton of fake gold out there. Yeah, I just, just done you know, I always say it's a, it's a question of technological innovation and resources, of course, but uh, once the technology advances much, much more, I mean, there's enough, you know, more than enough gold on, on this planet and, and under the surface uh, to dig out, you know, it's just a, don't you think it's a, just a question of technological innovation? Yep. Yeah, no, it, it's a, it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think, uh, and people are catching up to it, right. Especially for private individuals, right. So, so private citizens, mm -hmm. you know, again, it goes back to, you need to, you need to pack up your family and move somewhere else, right. Because of whatever circumstances are happening where you live, right. right. Uh, or government decided to confiscate savings or all this crap that happens all the time everywhere. And we tend to forget because it, these things happen in 10 to 20 year time frames, right? Um, you know, the Bitcoin is in, is in your possession, right? Like you can travel and you can travel with, like you can literally go naked remembering 24 words through a border. It, yeah, you know, this, this is the ultimate thing. I mean, you know, it's never been done before like that. I mean, this is totally new in human history that people can just cross borders, cross nations without... You know, with the whole world, literally, everything. You know, remember their whatever seed phrase if they want to. Whatever, you know. That's right. It's and it's it's amazing, and, and mm. I mean, I get chills when I think about that because, like, you, you know, if you were a fairly wealthy family back in the day, right? Mm. Uh, you, you, what people did is when war was coming to their region, right? They pack their paintings, they pack their their gold, they they pack like you, you know the things that are transportable. Uh, and, and then they go somewhere else, right? And then when the war is over, they go back to their farm or whatever, like their state. Uh, you, you know, they clean up a bit. They, you know, they'll find the old records or whatever of ownership. They, and then they hang the paintings again. They put the gold in the bottom of the, the place and life goes on, right? right. Mm -hmm. uh, this, you know, you're in Europe. You guys have seen this like hundreds of times, mm -hmm. right? I mean... How many times, especially border regions, 
uh, like have been run over by one side or the other, right? Like multiple times. Uh, you know, ask a Flemish person how yeah. many armies have gone through their towns, right? Um, and, and, you know, unfortunately, only uh, wealthy people were able to do that, right? With the, with the pack and go. Uh, now that's available for everybody, right? You can be the, the most commoner and, and you have a chance to pack up your wealth and go. Uh, that's a huge deal. Uh, it's mobile money. And, uh, and, uh, and you don't have to have, you know, a, a saw and a remelter to take a little piece off uh, to pay somebody for something, right? Uh, it's very divisible. I mean, all the properties are there. It's like exactly, it really yeah. is go to point oh. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I think people are going to wake up to that as, as need arises. The, that's why, you know, the, the Starbucks latte Bitcoin people, I, I think, are a little bit uh, misguided on this. Uh, what they want doesn't matter. What, what matters is what people need. Yeah. A, and, uh, and as people need, it's going to happen. It's, yeah. uh, you know, it's out of necessity. It's how it works. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Right? Yeah. Necessity drives everything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Rodolfo, I really enjoyed our talk. Um, do you have any final thoughts or where people can find you? I mean, I'm going to put your Twitter handle anyway, but anything else? Yeah, no, I, I mean, uh, you know, check out our products at uh, coinkite.com. Uh, uh -huh. There's a store there. Uh, you know, we have a Telegram group for cold card users. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, and uh, that's it. I mean, yeah, uh, thanks for having me. This was a fun conversation. Yeah, thank you. We take good care, Rodolfo, and hope to you know talk to you soon again in the future. You too. All right. Take care. Bye. Well, how do you like this talk with Rodolfo Novak? He's really, really knowledgeable. Uh, totally expert in security and building, you know, really good hardware wallets. Um, air gapped. So. Um, yeah, but also I was really interested in, in, in finding out his, his perspective, his, his thoughts on, on some other issues. So if you loved it as much as I did, please give it a like, share, subscribe, retweet, whatever you do, follow me. Uh, it would really help me if your ethical Bitcoin sponsors get in touch with me. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com. I'm going to do more uh, also together with some other experts such as Sven Schneiders, uh, more you know, uh, tutorial videos, instructional videos in German and or English. Uh, so if you have any questions or inspirations, ideas you want to come up with, uh, just, you know, hit us up and uh, send me an email or message. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and also Rodolfo Novak. I'm going to put those in the show notes and thank you so much for support and for listening and take good care of your security and of your health.